All right, so today we're going to be doing a little how to install the C9560 capacitor in order to alleviate some of the confusion around this cap. So we're, I'm just going to switch over to the microscope view here where Paul can show you how this is put together. So as you can see, the cap has its negative terminal on the left. Can you point to that? Yeah, negative terminal on the left and the positive terminal is on the right. Now, what you may have noticed in most of my videos is that the capacitor that I install is considerably larger than the original because the original capacitor is not the size that's going to work here. So what I used to do is I used to scrape the board on the left. So can you point the tweezers in the area where I would usually scrape away on the board? to make it work? Yeah, so we would usually have to scrape that away to make it work. So recently, I found a capacitor that fits there that allows us to not have to scrape the board. Can you put the cap back in view? Now, this is a larger capacitor, so it'll work, but as you can see, this capacitor has three tabs instead of two. So the positive end of the capacitor is on the right, where you can see that there is a stripe down it. So check out the, can you turn it around? Yeah, there we go. So see where that stripe is on the right? That stripe is indicative of the positive end of the capacitor, and the pin right underneath that is going to be the positive pin. Now turn the cap over again. Right. Now on the now to the left of it, you're gonna that center pin is the grounds pin, and that is gonna go on the ground area. Now that pin that it's in the middle is directly attached to the pin all the way on the left. So the whole reason that I got this capacitor is so that we have the benefit of the larger capacitor, but we no longer have to scrape the board. Now the reason I'm bringing this up is because in a lot of my older videos, before I had this capacitor, I would have to scrape the board and it created confusion with people when they got this capacitor. And now, recently I tried to alleviate this confusion by sending people a diagram that I'm going to show you on the screen over here. I'm gonna just switch over to my screen capture software, and you can see that I used to send people this picture. So it would essentially show you that this is the positive end of the capacitor, this is the negative end of the capacitor, I made it color-coded, and I also included information from the data sheet. And I thought that this picture would help people who thought that the, who thought that this would, who were kind of confused as to how to set this up. Uh, unfortunately, I have uh, some customers that are a little for lack of a better way to put it, out of their fucking minds. So I'm just going to show you this email chain that I received uh, after trying to help somebody. So here I will read you one of the emails that I got from one of my lovely fans. For all of you who want to know why I don't enjoy meeting fans, so somebody who is clearly out of their fucking mind. He says, I got the capacitor, I installed it, and noticed there were three solder tabs in the bottom of it. Curious, just wanted to see if the center was electrically attached to the negative or the positive. It's electrically attached to the positive side of the capacitor. Knowing this, there is no way what you did in your video will work. You'll get a direct short, just letting you know you're sending incorrect parts that will cause others to maybe install them and then nothing is going to work. So I figured I'd reply to it, and I replied to the email explaining that the polarity bar is the positive end of the cap, not the negative one. I also talk about why I set it up the way I did in the video. I scraped the board so the ground pair was long enough. I explained why I got this capacitor, and I also sent him this lovely picture. That's what you could see over here. That in the email, not in my printout of the email, would show up as this picture explaining how everything works, and uh, that's pretty much that. And the response to that email was this. I get it now. I should read this in my Alex Jones voice or something. You learned how to fix the problem from someone else. That's fine. Then you do a video on how to do it wrong. Then you offer the part for 800 times its price. Yeah, I bought one for too lazy to find one myself. They, you send me some bullshit about how the marking are opposite of what you showed in the video. Can you say scammer than laugh when people do what you said? Or can you say fuck them? I am the only one who can do this. Eat shit and die, you worthless piece of shit. I can find my own capacitor and will listen to the guy you stole this from before I buy your bullshit again. Ah, so I say, hi, let's go over this in sections. <laughs> I can't help it. What a fucking idiot. Anyway, let's go over this in sections. The top comment in this video for me states that I placed the cap the wrong way by mistake. And as you can see, the first comment, I said that I put the cap on with the incorrect polarization. By the way, it will still work if you put it in the incorrect polarization, not right thing to do. 
And that comment was made over one year ago. So I just find this funny, this, this idea that I put up this video to purposely show people how to fix it wrong. So they have to send it to me. <laughs> oh, and I said, we make mistakes. The best thing we could do is accept them, notate them, and move on. Two, it is common knowledge that a striped bar in a capacitor is the positive side. I sell a capacitor with a bar on the positive side. Three, when you express confusion with the cap and reached out to me, provide you with a diagram to clarify your concern and question. Four, a little bit of math correction here. 800 times $1.55 would be $1,240. We do sell the cap for $7.99, so that's kind of off. And as usual, we discourage people from sending this machine to, for repair because the GPU, the VRAM, and especially the graphics mocks will be dead by now. We routinely perform services that profit two to four hundred. So why do I really care about that $9 a week in profit? And this other one that was sent saying, can you please send me a copy of the data sheet or a link? I'm just not buying all of this. Anyway, so as you can see, Paul is going to be doing this repair today, and we are going to see if this works or if this is really all a scam. And you'll also be able to see uh, how to install the capacitor the right way. So let's get to it, which means figuring out which key I hit to go to your microscope camera. So, yeah, there we go. All right, so here we're going to be looking at the old capacitor. So... Um, So we're just going to add a little bit of flux to help in removing the old capacitor. Now you can technically do this with an iron as well, which if you're a newbie, it's better to do it with the iron because you have less of a chance of hot air getting anywhere it's not supposed to. Paul is good at this, so he's not going to get any hot air going and melting CPU balls. You'll also notice that his capacitor is here, and the CPU is here, and he's blowing the air this way so that it doesn't get on the CPU, which is a good thing to do. You don't want to blow it so that your hot air is here, your CPU is here, and you're blowing hot air into the CPU. You can also use a larger tip like this to remove the, cap the capacitor piece by piece. But it's up to you. It's personal preference. So now this is the new capacitor. And can you just flip it over just so that they can see the bar the other way, just so that they really get an idea of where this goes? Right, yeah, so the bar is going to go on the pad that is closer to the CPU, like this. All right, so he's just going to have to like, add a little bit of solder to those pads, probably wick away the old solder, add some the, the lead-free, and add some leaded, and go from there. Beep. There we go. What is this, iPad rehab? Where's the fume extract? How are we going to win in the company football game? Right, you know, you don't want to put too much solder because here's the thing, if you put too much solder, then those pads will bridge. And some people have said after I installed the cap, I noticed that I have a zero ohm short to ground on that line, and that's because you put too much solder under there. And if you put too much solder under there, remember, the cap does have that extra space. It's not going to ooze out the sides. It's just going to ooze internally, and it's going it to all happen under the chip. So you want to make sure you don't put too much solder there so that you don't short those two pads together. So now we've got to heat it back on the board. Not exactly the prettiest looking thing in the world, but what are you going to do? Not like Apple gave you much choice in the matter. Uh, all right. I suppose it's time to see if this works. Yeah, but they can't see because the multimeter that shows up on the screen died again. I don't know if that dude that emailed me is going to believe it. Is he going to buy it? <laughs> I don't think he's going to buy it. All right, we're going to do this. We're going to make your microscope really tiny. Use that zoom. Oh, always something in the way. 
All right, so mold, there we go. Let's ohm it out. Very good. See? Totally not a scam, bro. Uh. All right, so let's see. Reassemble and let's see if we get a picture and all that. If after you reassemble it, you get a picture. This part is boring, so I'll probably fast forward it. You know what makes this particularly funny is that I actually have a canned response telling people not to fix this anymore. Let's see if I can find that. So if I go to screen cap here, I have these canned responses that I use. And if I click 2010 GPU, it says at the bottom, this model is nearly eight years old now and there's a chance of something else going wrong with it due to its age. So I would not recommend going ahead with it. My canned response literally says, don't fix it. There's always a conspiracy with some people. All right, but, do, but is there a picture? Oh, let's see if we can see it in the microscope. That's kind of cool. That's an apple. Whoa. Well, I don't have a camera on that side of the desk, but I do have a microscope, and as you can see, there is, <laughs> there is an Apple logo there. That is, and you can see the individual pixels. That, that's pretty psychedelic. That's pretty cool looking. And that is how you install the C9560 mod. So that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And if you are entirely mentally unhinged, may I suggest that you make a purchase from the iPad Rehab Supply Store at MendonIPadRehab.com. She specializes in scams, research of scams, so if you believe you've been scammed, she actually has a scam department where you can send her the capacitor that you received in the mail and that she will personally authenticate whether or not what you received is the proper device and then sell you a better one. So that's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.